The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. As we have already learned, the most important component in a laser, or the heart of the laser, is the gain medium or the optical amplifier. This is no ordinary amplifier, this is an amplifier for light. And in this demonstration, we're going to show you and hopefully convince you that indeed light can be amplified. The amount of amplification is not so huge, but I'm sure we'll make it convincing enough so that you get the feel that indeed that light can be, can be amplified. The setup we're going to use is, is here. We're going to have a, a laser, which is going to be our light source. Here's the, here's the output of the, of the laser. We're going to reflect it by this mirror here and then this mirror over here. Now, the laser beam then enters this, this optical amplifier. Now, this optical amplifier is, is essentially this. It's a, it's a discharge tube, helium-neon gas mixture uh, that will give gain amplification or gain at 6328 angstroms. In fact, the light enters this window here and then comes out at the other end. And that's what we have essentially uh, uh, mounted here, right below. Okay? So the, then the output uh, through the through this amplifier, and the amplifier right now is turned off, then goes onto, onto a detector over here, and then the output of the detector then goes onto a scope, onto a oscilloscope over here, and, and also uh, we look at the output on a, on a, digital, uh, on a digital, digital meter. All right, so we have two ways of looking at the same, at the same uh, output. All right, now we're ready to, to, set, to set zero. All right, so first what I'm going to do is then block, block the beam of light over here, and let's look at the zero on the scope and the zero on the, on the meter. Now, the meter says uh, 008, which is not quite zero, and the reason for that is because we have room light. Uh, hitting the detector. So what I'm going to do to get rid of that, I'm going to put this little hood over the detector. Now we see that the output of the, of the meter now is indeed, is indeed zero. And also, hopefully, then the output of the scope here, this is, will be our zero on the, on the oscilloscope. Now, if I take this card away, let the light go through, you can see that now the output on the scope has changed and the meter reads around 364 or 63 or, or, ver or thereabout, which is the output of the laser. Now all I have to do is block, block the laser beam, and we go back to zero on the meter as well as zero on the scope. Here we are. Laser beam is back again, and then we get the, that same value again. Now we're all familiar with absorption of light. And uh, I just want to just demonstrate it, just for reference. I'm going to put a piece of glass in front of the, of the laser beam. And we know that glass at normal incidence has a uh, reflectivity of about 4% per surface. So I should get an attenuation of about 8% or so uh, when I put this piece of glass in, 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 the, in the beam of light. Now you can see the meter has dropped now to 330 uh, 300 and, well, if I can keep it still, 320 something. Now, if I take the piece of glass away, you know, we go up to the previous number of 360 something. So you can see we have about an attenuation of about uh, 8 or so uh, percent. Now, what I'm going to do now is put this piece of glass uh, before the detector also. And indeed, I'm going to hold it against the uh, the, the uh, tube here so that I don't shake too much. And again, you can see that the attenuation 
is, is also about, uh, about 8% or so. Here, let me put it in the front. And, and also then I'll put it in the back again, and hopefully I'll put it in the same position. You can see this, oop, I hold it still. And then take it away. And then roughly we get this 8% attenuation. So now we've demonstrated that indeed light can be, can be easily, uh, easily attenuated. Now we come to this crucial uh, demonstration of gain. So now I want you to then watch the, both the scope and, uh, and the meter as I turn on the, the amplifier. So here I'm going to now turn on the amplifier. And remember this number is around 363 or so, 364. Now you can see on the scope we jumped a little bit and, and the meter has gone up to 380 something, which is an increase of about 5%. Let me turn it off. Again, you can see on the scope went down. In fact, just watch the scope for a little while. I'm going to turn it on and off very fast so that you get a feel that here it goes up a little bit and down a little bit. Since it's only a few percent, it's difficult to see it on the scope the way I have it set it up. I have it set up, but it's much easier to see it on the meter. So you can see that with amplification, we have 380-something. With no amplification, then we're back to 360-something. Again, roughly, it's about 5% uh, amplification. Now, you may wonder that uh, maybe what we're getting is, when I turn on the amplifier, that we're getting light from the amplifier that hits, hits the detector. It's not really amplification. So to prove this, what I'm going to do is block the beam of light going into the amplifier so that there's no light going on the detector. We're back to our zero on the meter. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on the, the amplifier just by itself, just to see if there's any light from the amplifier falling on the detector. So here we go. Watch the meter and the scope. And here is the amplifier on. Again, you can see that there's no change on the meter or the scope. Here's off. And do it again. On. And and off. So indeed, we've shown that light from the amplifier or spontaneous emission from the amplifier is not hitting the detector and increasing uh, the output. So again, let me just redo it again for you. Here is, here is the light falling on the detector without amplification. Again, 360 something. And here comes the amplification. Again, so, yeah, it's close to 380, a little bit less than we had before. Maybe the amplifier is getting a little old. Here we are without amplification. We have this value. So in summary, we've shown that light can be indeed amplified. In this case, we used a helium-neon amplifier to amplify light from a helium-neon laser. We showed you a gain or amplification of 5% per pass. Now, you may think that's a small amount of gain, but a lot of helium-neon lasers use gain of even less than 5%, and they have many, many applications. Of course, if you have even more gain, then you can get more powerful laser outputs with even greater number of applications.